believe in love at first sight? Um, I believe you can have a connection with somebody, but I don't know if I can say I love you, like on sight. <laughs> but I'm open, let me not, universe, hey. <laughs> I'm open to love at first sight, but you know, I don't I don't know how, how real it is. What's up everybody, it's Nafisa Williams and you may know me from Black Lightning. Make sure you watch this episode of Madam Noir is in this room as I discuss love, family, relationships, and how all of that has helped shape me to become the woman that I am. Love is understanding. Love is selflessness. Love is about communication. Yeah, I think at the core with those three things. But we have to be careful that when, when we're given those things that it's reciprocated and it's mutual because then, then that's when we get into areas that can cause conflict. I believe you gotta be really careful with who you link up with and who you're giving that to because you wanna make sure you're receiving it as well. I don't think love is a one-way street. 50-50 love. <laughs> I had two really serious and long-term relationships when I was really, really young, starting at 16 to 21 and another one from 21 to 28. I think they really set the, the bar and the standard for me. I was really, really grateful to have experienced those relationships, especially very young in my life, to set the tone for, for how the other should be. So kudos to them, and it's, it's a grateful thing that I can leave those relationships after maybe growing apart from each other or just moving on in life and or, or just really accepting the fact that we all have a certain amount of time with each other. You know, love isn't always forever with just one person. I think we can have many connections with many people over our lifetime. Um, but those two relationships, and it came to unconditional support and, and friendship, I think, Friendship should be at the foundation of a relationship. When you have that ride or die, like we're friends first, like how you do with your best friends, I think that should be the standard. There's a certain level of, of a bond that you don't wanna break with your best friend. You know what I mean? Like if it's truly your best friend, like you hold that to a certain weight. And I think if you can have that foundation in a relationship and just have open communication, because I think a lot of times there's things going on in relationships and we don't talk about them, but if, if we can have that, that open line of communication, I think a, a lot of broken hearts would be alleviated um, or, or not last as long as they were if, if things weren't talked about. And, and closure could be easier if, if, again, if that's what it comes to, to, to be able to communicate about it. You know, there's some heartbreaks that I was like, Lord Jesus, I thought you said we was gonna be together forever. And you have to, as time goes on, as, as life goes on, the older I get, the more wiser I get, I understand that we gotta enjoy each other while, while we have it because we really can't plan for the future. I don't even know if it's realistic to say, you know, this, is, this may be forever. I, I mean, I think it may be possible, maybe, but at the same time, like, I think we, everything has a, 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 a shelf date we just got to enjoy it because again some people are really in our lives for a season and then there are some relationships that may be around for the rest of our lives but guess I can't say that until I'm gone <laughs> <laughs> my ideas of relationships have changed tremendously you know when you're younger it's about how somebody looks and what they may have if you're shallow and i can say i was shallow at a point and we, we you know we can be that way but again to me it's about character to me it's about purpose it's about goals and spirituality so that's how it's changed and then i also just think especially as women we've been taught that we need to be saved and we've been taught that we need a man and we need to be in a relationship. And I don't really think that's true. And I, and I, I don't agree with it. I think we need to spend time by ourselves to know who we are so we know what we want. As I said, I was in relationships for a good period of my life really, really young. As I was going into my 30s, I was like, you know what? And so heavily deep focused in my career, I was like, I need to spend time by myself. You know, it was like one relationship to the next relationship. And it was like, no, who is Fisa? Who is Fisa by herself? 
these last five years, it's just been me. I've been dating myself, I've been loving myself. I've been setting the foundation with my career because soon I do wanna have a family. But I think it's about spending that time with yourself and knowing, enjoying your own company. Oh, that's a good one, girl. What scares me about love? I think it's just a really vulnerable idea to open up. You know, sometimes that's that's not easy to really just completely open up, like let's just be honest. Maybe it'd be scary to not find that one, maybe. But it, but again, maybe I found it and it was for a season or maybe, you know, we, you never really know. But I think for me, the fear is maybe opening up. To be honest, that vulnerability. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not uh, something easy to do. Character is everything to me. A person's character speaks way more than how they look because baby, them looks is gonna fade. Uh, it speaks way more than a career because I have my own and I don't care about that. Um, it speaks way more than money. It speaks way more than status, success. I think character at the root, if, if the character is, is beautiful, then I could work with it. I think drive is really, really important to me when it comes to a man. I think a man should be a king, a leader, and a provider. Even though I have my own, I need to know that you got us. I got us, but I need to know that, you know, I watched my father be a provider. I watched my dad take really, really good care of us. He grind and he hustled and he brought the bacon home. And I think that's what a man's job is to do. And what's so funny is my dad is probably my biggest inspiration and motivation for, for, for the hustle that I have. I watched my dad go get it. My friends know, like, we pray before I do anything. Like literally, like my team, my glam, my friends, any guy that I'm dating, like, and if I'm in a serious relationship, I can't, I, I can't be in it if I can't pray with you. And it's not about being religious. That's not what it's about. It's about, we, we can even call it affirmations. There's so many things that we can call it. I think it's more so about spirituality and just having a positive mindset. You know what I mean? But it's the core of who I am. Uh, before I do anything, like I literally, I, my friends call me the deacon because, <laughs> baby, I got a strong prayer and I got a direct con connect. <laughs> Everybody know that it's, you know, I, I just, whatever it is in life that I want, I literally, you know, pray about it. I write it down. I keep a gratitude journal. So again, I can never say enough that my spirituality at the core is, is everything that I am and uh, why I'm here. I want my relationship to be easy. And not that anything is gonna be perfect, but I want my relationship to be something that I am just completely able to let my hair down and, and, and be myself. And I love to have fun. I love to get dressed and, and go out and, and, and date night. And you know, I'm a very adventurous person. I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm trying to like, travel the world before I die. Like I'm trying to visit as many places as I can. I want my, my relationship, whoever I'm in a relationship with, to be a partner and not just so much a romantic partner, but somebody who I can team up with and like dominate the world with, have fun with. Uh, you know, what I do is it is very uh, demanding of my time. So when I can let my hair down, when I can take a couple days off, like I wanna have fun. You know, that's what it's about. When in a relationship and you're dealing with disagreements, you gotta be free of the ego. We always wanna be right. Or a lot of times we, we wanna be right or we wanna win the battle. And I think it's about having that open line, again, open line of communication and not wanting to be right and, and really hearing the person out for why they feel that way. Cause it could be a really good point. It, you, you never know what could have happened in the past that could be a root for them or that idea in the disagreement. And I think it's really about just letting the ego go and just really trying to hear each other out. One of the hardest things for two people to do is to fully understand each other because we're coming from different experiences. We've been raised differently. The only way you can really understand, I, I think your sibling is the only person who may understand the most of you. So coming into a relationship, the dynamic of, of, of a lot of things are just who you are, how you operate is different. So I think it's about truly wanting to take the time to understand who that person is. And I think that comes with communication. I think love is selfless. I'm all in. 
there's no gray area with me. The light switch is either on or off. Like I'm a true Sagittarius. <laughs> so I have to stay excited and entertained, if you will. Not to sound like shallow about that or anything, but I, it, my attention, you have to have my attention because when I, when I check out, it's really no coming back. <laughs> so I think you have to keep me engaged. You have to keep me challenged on my toes. Because like I said, if I, if I check out, the, the switch is off, but I, I love hard. If I'm gonna do it, I don't really halfway do it. There's no gray areas with my love.